Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and I was playing around with Tabletop Simulator's X-Wing 2.0, and I came across a couple of things that I thought were really cool, and I got to thinking, not everyone I know uses Tabletop Simulator's X-Wing 2.0 feature very often, so let's just go ahead and create a quick guide on how to do some basic things. So, first of all, how do you import the list that you so painstakingly created on a separate website. Let's go ahead and show you how that works. Okay, so the website that I like to use is YASB. I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the below description. Now, yes, you can use the Fantasy Flight one to create your squad, but as far as I know, you can't export it into Tabletop Simulator, hence why I use this particular website. So if you're not sure, if you're doing everything right here, my advice is go into the Fantasy Flight app create your list there, and then when you're happy with how it all looks, go ahead and recreate it here, and then compare the point values to make sure that everything matches up correctly. So here, you're going to choose your faction along the top. There's Rebels, Imperial, Scum, and so on. And then you just go ahead and select the ship from this drop-down menu. Let's say I want a uh, Jump Master 5000, for example. Then you can go ahead and choose some um, upgrades if you want off to the right-hand side. Let's just say I went ahead and created one already, which I did for you. Um, I went ahead and went TIE Interceptor Happy. I've got five Saber Squadron Aces, all with the Elusive. Let's say I like this list. It's 195 points, and I want to export that into Tabletop Simulator. So on the top right of the screen is Print View as Text. If I click on that, it'll sort of bring this window up. We don't want this. On the very bottom of this central window is a TTS tab. Click on that. Then we're going to control C to copy the text that is here. We're going to copy and paste this text into Tabletop Simulator. So we've copied that. Let's go ahead and jump back to Tabletop Simulator so we can create this list. Okay, so we're back. Let's go ahead and jump over to the game's control panel. Uh, if we zoom out, we should see a little cash register like machine over here to the right. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Rotate the camera. There we go. So we've got FFG spawner, single spawner, TTS spawner, and builder. Now you can build your list from here if you want to, but I just think it's easier to um, just copy and paste that text in. So we're going to hit TTS spawner. We're going to choose the faction that we created that list for. In this case, it was Imperial. And then we're going to control V to paste all of that into here. Then we're going to spawn list. It may take a second. It's all going to load here in a minute. There it goes. All right, so there's all of the ships that we we have in need. We're going to select all of it by just creating a selection box. We're going to left mouse and hold to pick it all up. We're going to just sort of drag it over. We can also use the mouse wheel to rotate it. So let's just go ahead and do something like that. We just dropped it. Let's go ahead and just rotate the camera straight around. There we go. So now, let's go ahead and just move it a little bit more to the left. Pick it up. Move. Now, this is a pet peeve of mine. Um, I'm someone with a little bit of OCD. I don't like it when the cards spawn on top of each other like this. I don't know how anyone can leave their cards this way. So, you know, after this spawns, you may want to take the time to just sort of do something like this. Just... Move the cards around to your liking. Make sure everything is nice and center. Um, I wish there was a way to make it exactly uh, <laughs> exactly the way you want it, but unfortunately, it's just a it's an eyeball kind of thing. Okay, so we've done something like this. We've got all of our ships. Now you're thinking, okay, that that's cool, but I've got five saber squadron aces. Now, yes, if you hover your mouse over the card and over the ship in question, the tooltip will say. Saber Squadron Ace 3. This says Saber Squadron Ace 3. So you could, while you're playing, just hover your mouse over each ship and decide, okay, th this is these two belong together, so if this one takes damage, I should put damage on this card. There's a slightly easier way to do all of that and to, to eyeball which ships belong to which cards, but it requires a little bit of setup beforehand. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to load in a bunch of different colored turrets and then assign different colored turret colors to these TIE Interceptors. Now, I know what you're thinking. Vince, TIE Interceptors don't use turrets. I understand that. These turrets are not going to be used during the game. They're just to help you 
tell which tie interceptors are what color, okay, for aesthetics only. So if you guys haven't already, you're going to want to install or subscribe to the turret module that someone has created. Really cool, by the way. Um, I'll put a link to that in the below description. Before we check that out, we should probably save this list as an object. To do that, we're going to select everything. We're going to right click. We're going to save object. And we'll just name it XW for X-Wing Saber Uncolored. That way we can reload this list at a later date, should we leave, which we're going to right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to games and we're going to go to the colored arc indicator and tokens for X-Wing. Again, you've subscribed to this or should have already. Um, again, I'll put a link to that in the below description. I'm going to go ahead and load that. And we'll end up here. We're going to go ahead and save this as its own object. We're just going to select all of these. We're going to right click, we're going to save object, and we're going to name it whatever you want to name it. I've already saved it, so I don't need to do it, but you're going to save it as an object so you can then reload it back to where you were. So I'm going to go back to my games. I'm going to, now you may have an auto save already out here. That's great. I'm going to assume that the auto save is broken and it didn't work. Let's just load a fresh X-Wing Unified 2.0 session. But usually, Tabletop Simulator will save the last thing that you had. Let's go ahead and get rid of this text over here. Okay. So, again, we've got a fresh session here, and oh, our TIE Interceptors are gone. How do we get them back? Well, that's why we saved the objects prior. We're going to go to Objects and Saved Objects, and we're going to bring in Saber Uncolored here. Just drop them. Hey, check it out. These are the five ships that we actually had prior to um, leaving our previous session. So all of that is here, and somehow I brought this with me, which I shouldn't have done. Let's just get this out of the way. Okay. I probably selected that by accident when, when saving this group. Um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in the different colored turrets that we saved. So let's go ahead and bring those saved objects in. Okay, now what I like to do from here, let's go ahead and close this out. What I like to do from here is orient the single turret indicators to face north. That way they're easier to put on your ships, and that, that way they're facing north. So what you're going to do is you're going to select all of them. You're going to left-click, hold, and then use the mouse wheel to rotate to the other side. So you have something like this, all of the single turrets will face north. That way I can drag them down to these tie interceptors as I want to. So let's just go ahead and start assigning different colors. Uh, this one will be green. And by that token, we can assign this little solid color here right above there. That way we can tell that they're the same color. We'll do the same thing with yellow over here. We'll just put that there. And we'll put that yellow one here. Fun fact, if you uh, click on one and hit the plus sign a couple of times, it'll increase in size. So if you have a hard time seeing these colors at a glance, you can blow them up like so. You don't have to. You can also do the same thing to these turrets here if you just want to click and hold and, and make them bigger. Up to you. It's, it's your game. So let's go ahead and get red done. We'll do something like that. And we'll put the red there. Um... My OCD is going to make me do this now because the rest are that size. <laughs> it's just it's just how I roll. Um, we'll do this teal color. We'll put that there. And we'll put that over there. We'll go ahead and blow that up real quick. And lastly, I guess purple. And we'll put that there. And there. Okay, and because, you know, let's just decrease the size of this. Alright, so, yeah, I know they're not exactly the same size, but you get the idea. Now we've got different colored turrets, and again, we're not going to use them during the match. This is just for aesthetic purposes. So, cool, right? I mean, you can get rid of these other ones. We don't need them. Let's go ahead and just select them all, hit delete. And, oops, if we forgot something, we can go back into objects, saved objects and just reload everything again if we need to. 
pull what we need, and then delete them again. So, you know, there's that's really cool. I love the whole saved objects feature. But anyway, so how do we get the dials to match the colors? Well, um, they're not going to be exact, but what you're going to do is before you start assigning dials to particular ships, you're going to right-click, and then there's a color tint op option. We're going to click on that, click on the purple color, and just try and get it exact as you can, uh, and then hit apply. So we've got that. Right click there, color tint. We're going to pick that teal color. There we go. Uh, there we go. Color tint, red. Good. Color tint. And green. There we go. So now we've got dials, we've got turrets, and markers all matching colors, which is kind of cool. Now, before you go any further with this, there's a reason why you may want to save everything on how it looks right now. We're going to uh, create a uh, duplicate of this, or if you just want to save this as an object too, you can. Let's go ahead and do that. Right-click, save object, and we'll name it XW Saber Colored. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a backup of all of this. Um, I think some tournaments now online that use this tabletop simulator require players to do this. I was reading somewhere when I got bored. Um, so you can control C, control V to easily copy and paste over. And from here, you can assign your dials. Um, I would hold off on assigning dials until the very last possible second. Um, for various reasons. These are un, unassigned right now. So now you can assign these dials and so on. Now, I would recommend that you do all of this maybe a day or a couple of hours prior to your match. Reason being, whenever you save an object, and this will lock in that particular version number. Let's say, um, this is just arbitrary numbers, just off the top of my head. Let's say that right now we are running Tabletop Simulator X-Wing Unverified 2.0. Let's say that this version is um, A. And we save this group and we're using version A. Well, let's say that a week later, the X-Wing... Uh, tabletop Simulator, verif Unverified, two point whatever, upgrades to version B. Well, we're going to be loading this A object into a B uh, X-Wing game, and things may not work right. So the objects that you have saved will eventually become obsolete as the... Um, as the apps or the, as the games themselves um, become updated by their developers. So you want to create these objects and custom color code your squads maybe a day or a couple of hours prior to whatever important match that you're about to play. Um, just so that you avoid any sort of nasty surprises and things don't break on you. Okay, so you've got your squad set up and you're ready to start moving ships. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dial. Um, as we showed you earlier, you're going to want to drag the dial over to the ship that um, it belongs to in order to assign that dial to that ship. You only have to do that one time, unless you happen to delete the ship by accident. You have to restore it. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But for right now, we're just going to show you what the dial looks like and, you know, what are all these buttons? What am I supposed to do with this? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So on the very top of this dial, and the look of this may change because, again, the developer of this particular mod uh, on Tabletop Simulator will be uh, making updates and changing the look. In fact, this looks different to me. I, it used to be all white, these boxes. Now they're all black. I like it. I can actually see these things a bit better. The top R button, if you just hover over it, allows you to do barrel rolls to the left, barrel rolls to the right. You can also boost from here as well. So just to quickly show you what that might look like, let's go ahead and bring this up here. And let's hover over the R. So if I do this, it'll boost forward. Cool, huh? There's an undo button, should you want to undo that. If you want to barrel roll to the right and forward, you can do something like that. Again, just undo. And these are actions that you'll be taking as you play. Um, the right one, let's go ahead and move this out of the way allows you to a, a quickly assign a token to that ship. Now, you don't have to do that. You could drag from over here if you want to, like here's a focus token. Bam. I, I, I could do that if I wanted to. Um, rather, I can just come over here, click on that evade, 
and the evade token automatically pops up for me, which is convenient. Some tokens actually have um, other abilities that you can assign to them. So for example, if I, if I spawn this tractor token, well, a ship that has a tractor token, um, your opponent can tractor them in a particular direction. And if you hover over the tractor token, you'll see that you can actually do that right from this token. You can have them boost forward or barrel roll them in a particular direction and so on. So that's all cool, right? Um, this other one to the left allows you to um, gauge distance and arc. So um, after you've moved and you're like, well, am I in range for a shot during the, during the engagement phase? Uh, you can come right here and click on that and you'll see, oh, I have front arc on this guy here and that's at range three. I've got range one, range two, range three. Um, that, that's really cool. You can also just hit this delete button and that'll get rid of that. Um, if you want to see just like, if you're measuring for like target lock, for example, you could click on this three here. And this is everything that is within range three of this. Let's say I took the target lock action. You can't as a tie interceptor. I'm just saying, if you could, and you're trying to measure for target lock distance, you would hit the three here and you'll see everything that you're within range three of. Then the only one would be this X wing over here. Gotcha. So we're going to hit delete to get rid of that. So yeah, and if you want to move, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the moves button and a little panel will pop up here. All you're going to do is you're going to pick the one that you want and click set. So let's say that I decide I want to move two straight. I'm going to click set and now it's set. And when it comes time to move, you're going to hover your mouse over the dial, hit F to flip it. And there's a couple of things you can do here. You can actually click the center button in order to make the template appear. You don't have to do that. It's there if you want it. To get rid of it, you just click on it again and it goes away. I like it. That's just me. Um, if you just want to move, just click on the move button on the very bottom of the dial and everything will move along with you, including your little turret there and your little evade there. Now, in order for the dial to work with a ship, it has to be locked. You'll note that whenever you hover your mouse over a ship, um, it'll point. That means the object is locked and you cannot move it. If it's just a hand, like this one is, I can move it around freely and in theory the dial should not work, I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, just make sure that everything is locked and it should be um, when you're, you're setting up your ships back here. Uh, speaking of which, whenever you're setting up your ships, this is just a quick little aside tidbit. Um, when you're measuring for asteroids, just click the toggle rulers button once and you can assign all of your asteroids within this grid. Um, whenever you're setting up your ships, click the toggle rulers button again to the right here. And this will show you, oh, I can only assign ships behind these particular rulers. Then just to get rid of it, click on it again. That's when you're setting up your ships. So we've covered how to import a list, how to um, bring your cards and your ships down here, how to color code them, how to save them as objects, how to create copies and maybe put them over here for backup. Now we'll go over what happens when I accidentally delete a ship. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a shot from the Millennium Falcon into the yellow TIE Interceptor. And as you can see, it was pretty darn effective. Three hits and a crit, and the TIE Interceptor unfortunately ruled two blanks and a focus. Now, did I keep rolling dice until I got this desired result? No, you can actually, if you need to, manually change the die values. So if I hover over a particular die and hit one or two or three, four and so on, it'll switch to different die faces. So we'll just go and do that. Um, to roll dice, all you do is you just take dice out of here and you select the ones that you wanna roll and then hit R a couple of times and there you go. The other option is just pick them up and shake your mouse a little bit to grab them all together and then go ahead and just click and drag and, and move the mouse and roll them that way. Up to you. Some people prefer different, different methods. So anyway, getting back to this example, it looks like the TIE Interceptor is pretty much dead at this point. Let's say that we assign the damage cards to yellow that we're supposed to. So we're going to have like, you know, that, that. We're going to see a crit in there somewhere. Flip that up. F to flip, by the way, in case I didn't mention it. And once you know it, the TIE Interceptor is dead. So we're going to remove this from the table at the end of Initiative 6, which is 
pretty much now. So let's just go ahead and say that, oh, okay, let's go ahead and remove that. But let's say by accident, I accidentally move the wrong ship. Um, you know what, let's go ahead and make sure that this works right. We're going to uh, unlock this for this example, and we're going to move it. And this is necessary in order for the computer to remember. The computer keeps a memory of where things are located, so I'm just going to quickly set that and then move it. There we go. And now it's locked. Okay. So let's say that we go to delete the yellow tie interceptor from this board, but we accidentally, accidentally, unlock this one and delete it. Now we're like, oh crap. Resist the temptation to use control Z, which is undo. That will break a lot of things in the game. Um, you have to reassign your dials, just it's not a good idea. So to quickly restore this, what you would have to do, as an overview, is respawn the ship from that little cache register thing over there, and then enter commands into that to get it to come back. But you've color-coded the ship already, and you're like, well, then I have to recolor the dial. No, you don't have to. You made a copy of it already over here. So all you have to do is make another copy of your copy and put it back to where it needs to be. So we deleted the purple ship by accident. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the ship and the dial. We're going to control C and then we're going to control V and there's our copy. Now how do we get it up there? Where did we leave it last time? Well, um, if we do this, if we right click on the ship and the description we're going to type whatever it said in the chat down there chat bottom left it says um squad saber squadron aces ship has been deleted you can respawn the model and use restore number one command to restore it to its position so we're going to type into this description of this ship restore number one and then we're going to click off of it we don't need to hit enter or anything like that we're just going to click off of it and wouldn't you know it it is back to where it needs to be we're going to go ahead and just put that back on top of it. And we should probably lock this while we're at it just to be on the safe side. And if we have to, we'll go ahead and just reassign the dial to that ship, which I think it already did. And we'll lock. And as far as the old dial is concerned, just get rid of that. There's no reason to have that old dial with the old ship that was deleted. Just delete the old dial, put the new dial in there along with this new ship, and you're good to go. So that's a quick way to restore. Just make sure that you've got... A backup list off to the side that way you can easily copy and paste and replace as you need to as a quick alternative to using your dial to measure ranges and to look at arcs as I mentioned earlier um, you could do something like this where oh I want to check to see you know if I've got forward arc on this person or I need to see oh am I at least within range three of someone rather than do that um, you can right click on the base of the ship and there's this fire arc front. If I click on that, it'll bring up a line and it actually says on the bottom left hand corner what you're all in range of. Um, let's take a look at this blue line real quick. This little notch is range one. This little notch is range two. So you've got range one right here. You've got range two in the middle. And then you've got range three beyond that. If we take a look at chat real quick, it would have said Jake Farrell not in range, Red Squadron veteran is at range three, Dutch Vander not in range, Han Solo not in arc. So it actually, with the right mouse button and that fire arc front, and if it and this ship had multiple, let's say it was the decimator and it had front and back, you could it'll have multiple options here for you to choose from. Um, you can just right click on that. Let's go ahead and just do the same thing maybe over here fire arc front and you can actually see um it even draws a little bullseye here for you which is kind of nice it shows you hey you're in bullseye arc of this ship here and if you look on the bottom left let's get out of that yellow so you can actually read it um dutch vander has multiple closest points and is most likely unobstructed at range one in bullseye so it'll actually tell you different things um based on where the ships are positioned it's a really cool feature if you're ever doubting this feature here, you can always just right click on the ship base and opt for that option instead. And just again, just to get rid of it, right click, fire arc front, just select it again, and you're good to go. 
Okay, so I hope these things help to get you started. I know this doesn't cover everything that this particular module or game has to offer, but I'm hoping that um, it'll sort of ease your pain into figuring all of this stuff out. And yes, you're going to make mistakes. I still make mistakes. I'm not even really good at this, to tell you the truth. I'm learning something new every day when I'm using this program. But like I said, hopefully this will help get you started. Um, special thanks to the maker of this mod. You're bringing joy to a lot of us X-Wing gamers out there that love to play tabletop, especially now during this whole quarantine situation. So super special thanks to you. And hats off for continuing to update and patch things and make things even better. It's so great. Um, so there you go. If you guys haven't already subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube, that way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.